Hey guys, so today we're gonna to be taking a look at the 32 liter black hole pack from Patagonia. And this is actually the first bag that I've tried out from Patagonia. And I know this is a company that people really love and so far I can definitely see why. It's been a great experience. The black hole pack has a lot of great features. I really like the look, it feels really durable. And it has an interesting size and shape that's more compact than you would expect for a 32 liter bag, which makes it more usable for your day to day than you would think, but still a really capable travel bag. And so this is another great suggestion that came in the comments for one of my previous videos. So thank you as always for the ideas and the suggestions and I'm really excited to share this with you guys. So let's just jump in and take a closer look at the 32 liter black hole pack from Patagonia. Starting out with the outside of the bag, it has a pretty nice outdoorsy look. Although it has some webbing and straps on the outside, it isn't overwhelming. It doesn't look too much like a hiking backpack, so a pretty nice mix there. The bag is offered in a variety of colors. I, of course, have the black version here, but it's offered in an orange, a white. So you can definitely see the different colors that are offered on the company's site. One thing I noticed about the black version here, and it seems to be the case with the other colors, is that the outside is a little bit on the shinier side, so it stands out a little more than the bags that I typically like to use. But it does give it a feeling of being a little bit more weather resistant. As far as the materials, the bag is made out of 100% recycled polyester, and it all has a DWR coating to make sure that your stuff is protected if you do get caught in some rain. On top of that, the bag has nice YKK zippers all around that also seem to offer a good amount of weather resistance. So in general, the bag is really well built. The materials feel like they're gonna hold up to any sort of travel that you can throw at them. And on top of that, Patagonia has really good warranty and repair programs in case you do ever manage to damage your gear. And one really nice bonus with the materials used here is that the bag is very lightweight. When it's empty, it comes in at around a pound, which is gonna be great, especially if you're trying to travel on airlines that have stricter weight restrictions. And so moving on to the capacity, as I mentioned earlier in the video, this is the 32 liter black hole pack. This is also offered in a 25 liter size, but I wanted to test out the 32 liter as that's typically a size that I like to travel with. And I've been really impressed with the overall size and silhouette and how much I've been able to fit into the 32 liter size. This fits my body really well. With the items that I currently have in here, I could definitely travel for a week or two. And I've just really been impressed with how slim the bag looks, even when it's fully packed out. It never sticks out too much, which makes it very easy to stay mobile and just walk around crowded cities or jump onto a public bus or a train. And because the bag has a pretty small and slim silhouette, even at this 32 liter capacity, I found that it works pretty well for day-to-day -day use, especially if you have a little bit of a bigger frame. So just a really great balance on capacity and form factor here, even though this is technically the same size as something like the Chrome Summoner pack, which we looked at pretty recently, I feel like this is gonna be able to hold a lot more and still not look any bigger. Continuing along the outside, I was happy to see that the bag has two external water bottle compartments, one on each side. In this one, I currently have the same water bottle that you've seen in all my other travel bag videos, and that fits in there pretty comfortably. The compartments are made out of a nice elastic mesh, so they come out a decent amount if you wanna put something a little bit thicker in there. If you have the bag fully packed out, even though this is elastic, it can get a little bit tricky to fit thicker items in here. So even though my water bottle isn't quite that big, once I filled the bag out, it was a little bit harder to stick it all the way in. On the front of the bag, you have a really solid handle that's gonna allow you to pick the bag up very easily or just carry it while you're walking around. And then along the front, there's two rows of webbing that are gonna be great for attaching things with carabiners. So I've used this to hang my Beat Studio wireless headphones when they don't fit inside of the bag. This might also be a good spot to attach an extra pair of shoes. So really like the additional versatility that this webbing adds. Moving on to the straps and the back paneling. So far, the bag has been pretty comfortable to wear. The straps offer a nice amount of padding. They're fairly thick and they're soft. On the inside, they don't have much of a meshy material to help prevent moisture from building up, so that would have been a nice addition, but they do have a nice width, and I really like the contoured shape for the straps. They really fit my shoulders well. In addition, the straps have an adjustable and removable sternum strap to help distribute the weight when you have a heavier load. And although I haven't had any issues yet, this does feel like the type of system where it would be fairly easy for the sternum strap to fall off and get lost, so just something to keep in mind. But as I mentioned, I haven't had any issues yet. Moving out of the back paneling, this has been pretty comfortable as well. It has a similar material to the strap, so it's nicely padded, it's pretty soft, feels great against the back. One thing that I noticed is that there isn't that much elevation, so there's not really much of an air channel here, so there is a tendency for moisture to build up when you're wearing it with a lot of weight. So I definitely would have liked to have seen more air channels all throughout the back paneling, kind of like we see on the Tortuga set out bags, which make it a lot more comfortable and less likely for your bag to get as wet while you're wearing this for a longer period of time throughout the day. 
The last thing I'll mention here while we're on the back is that there's this little hydration port. So if you place a water bladder into the laptop area, you'll be able to have water accessible throughout the day. Since we're on the back paneling, I'll go ahead and jump into the laptop compartment. So this bag has a laptop compartment that opens up completely flat. So it has a nice well-protected zipper that goes all the way around the bag. And so opening this up, this lay flat design is meant to be TSA approved. From what I've heard from different viewers on the channel, it can be a little bit hit or miss with this feature, but in theory, because the bag opens up flat, you can just place this on the security line while you're going through the airport and you won't have to take it out. And even if the airport security from wherever you're traveling gives you a little bit of a harder time, it's still easy to get in and out of the laptop area. And I really like how it's been implemented. It offers a nice amount of padding and protection. I really like that it has a separate sleeve for a tablet. So currently what I have in here is my iPad mini 2 and that fits in there pretty comfortably. This should be able to hold up to a full size 9 or 10 inch tablet, but I might stick out over the top just a little bit. The tablet sleeve offers a nice amount of padding and it also has a soft fleece lining on the inside to help prevent against scratching. And then moving on to the laptop compartment, it has this nice strap to help keep your laptop in place and slipping out if you do lay it down flat. So that opens up easily. And then this is meant to hold up to a 15 inch laptop. Currently what I have in here is my 13 inch MacBook Pro, but you can see there's a little bit of leftover space here for a taller device. And one thing that I was really happy to see for both the laptop pocket and the tablet sleeve is that they are elevated off the bottom of the ground. So if you need to place your bag down or you drop it, it's gonna be pretty well protected. And so pulling the laptop out, it offers a decent amount of space. The compartment doesn't have the same fleece lining that we saw in the tablet sleeve. So I do wish that that had been included to provide a little bit of additional protection against scratching. But the back paneling does have a very nice thick padding. The sleeve itself isn't very padded, so I do wish that this offered a little bit more protection, but it does have a nice amount of elasticity, so if you have a little bit of a thicker device, it should be able to fit in here pretty comfortably. So pretty nice implementation and versatility overall in the laptop area, and it matches up well with similar compartments that we've seen in other travel bags. Jumping into the organizational options of the bag, I really like that Patagonia chose to go with more minimal but effective pocketing. So on the front, there's just one simple quick access compartment with a side opening zipper. It offers a nice amount of protection and it has this nice flap that comes over to add some additional water resistance. And so opening this up, this is just a very simple, taller compartment that offers a decent amount of space. And so jumping into the items that I currently have in here, first off, I have my Apple Magic Mouse, and then I have a lightning cable to charge my phone. And then I also have my Kindle e-reader. And even with the items that I had in there, I still have plenty of leftover space. This would have been a good spot to throw in something like my BagSmart cable organizer or maybe a laptop charger. And so because this is a larger compartment, if you put some smaller items in here, it can get a little bit disorganized. It would have been nice to maybe have a slip pocket or two in here. But I've just been really impressed with how much space this compartment offers, even when the bag is pretty full. And it's just nice to have an area where you can quickly toss in some bulkier items or even your wallet and phone while you're going through TSA. At the top, there is another simple but very spacious quick access compartment. This has a nice wide opening that's gonna make this great for holding bulkier accessories and to be able to easily see everything that's in the compartment at once. And so currently what I have in here is my Ray-Ban sunglasses with their case. And then I also have my GoPro Hero 3 Plus. And then I also have my in-case accessory pouch, which is the dop kit that I typically use when I'm trying to save a little bit of space. This is even gonna be a great spot for putting something like a larger pair of headphones if you wanna carry them inside of the bag. So now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at how much capacity it actually has. Even with all those items that I had in there, which are pretty bulky, there was still a little bit of leftover space if I wanted to throw something else in there. So no internal organization offered here, no sort of felt lining or anything, just very simple. But I really love having these larger compartments that let me organize things the way that I want to. And so the last pocket that we're gonna be taking a look at is the main area. And although this doesn't have a clamshell style opening, it does open nice and wide, which still makes it pretty easy to pack out. So with the wider opening, I can still have a pretty good feel of what's in the main area. I can't see all the way to the bottom, but it's still pretty easy to get the items in and out. And so jumping into what I currently have here, first off is a pair of Toms that I'd like to take with me on every trip. Next up, I have my smaller packing cube that has my t-shirts and socks and smaller clothing items. And then the last thing that I have in here is the medium sized Peak Design double-sided packing cube, which I've been testing out recently. I've heard so much about this packing cube and so far I've been pretty impressed. It holds the same amount of stuff that the larger double-sided packing cube that I typically use holds, but it's a little bit shorter, which I like, which gives me a little bit more flexibility in how I can use the rest of the compartment. So definitely excited to test this out with a few more bags. 
Now with the compartment emptier, you can get a better feel for the space. No sort of internal organization in this main area, just a very simple big bucket where you can toss in a ton of stuff. Even though I switched to the Peak Design Packing Cube, I was able to fit the normal double-sided packing cube that I've used in all my other travel bag videos very comfortably. The last thing to mention in this area is that on the flap, there is a small mesh zippered compartment that you can use to hold smaller accessories that you don't want floating down into the bottom of the bag. And so opening this up, I really like that the mesh makes it very easy to see what's in the compartment. Nice amount of space here. Currently what I have is just a simple Field Notes notebook. And then I also have a USB-C hub for my Touch Bar MacBook Pro. And then on top of that, there's just a simple lanyard with a clip that you can use to hold your keys, or in this case, what I have here is my Gerber Shard Multi-Tool. So really great job in this main area and throughout the rest of the bag of keeping things simple and making really smart choices with regards to design and the use of space. So if you're looking for something durable and versatile that's gonna work well in a ton of different environments, the Black Hole Pack from Patagonia is gonna be a great option to keep in mind. And so to wrap up, it's been a really good experience testing out the 32 liter black hole pack from Patagonia. The bag has a great look, it feels really solidly built, it has some nice features, and it comes in at a really good size. And so you can purchase this bag for about $150 on Patagonia's site, and that's a pretty reasonable price in my opinion for the quality of bag that you're getting and compared to a lot of the other similar bags in this price range. And so as I was testing this out, one of the first bags that this reminded me of was the North Face Caban. That was another really well-made backpack that had a slick, minimalistic look. It's a little bit slimmer and smaller than this bag here. The one that I looked at on the channel was about 26 liters versus the 32 liters that this one is. And it was also a little bit slimmer, so it was harder to fit bulkier items. But I did slightly prefer the look and organization of the Caban backpack, and I know that it's offered in a few different sizes, so maybe one of the larger versions would be more comparable to this and how much it can actually hold. And that bag came in at around $130, so if you're looking for something similar to this with a slightly more modern look, that's gonna be a good option to keep in mind. The next bag this reminded me of was the Fjall Raven Raven 28, which we also looked at pretty recently. That was another very versatile bag that worked well for daily use or even for quick trips. It had a lot of great organization, it was comfortable, well built, and it came in at around $100, so a little bit less expensive than this. That bag was about 28 liters, so it wasn't gonna be able to hold quite as much as the 32 liters that this bag has. But if you want something with a little bit more of a traditional look that has maybe a little bit more organization and is gonna help you save a little bit of money, the Fjall Raven Raven 28 is definitely gonna be a good option to check out. Another bag this reminded me of was the 2019 Oppose This Invisible Carry-On, and that's been one of my favorite bags that we've looked at this year. It has a really great look. It comes in at 25 liters, making it really good for your day-to-day -day or for quick trips. I've been really impressed with how much that bag can hold, and it definitely has a little bit more of a modern and professional look than this bag. So if you're looking for something similar to this that's gonna work well for daily or travel use, but also work well for the office, that's definitely gonna be a good option to look into. The next bag this made me think of was the 511 Rapid Quad Zip Pack, which is gonna have a little bit more of a tactical look than this, and it's not gonna be quite as big, but it's just a really versatile bag that has a size that's gonna work well for day-to-day -day use or even for quick trips. It opens up flat, it has a nice amount of organization, it's very comfortable and durable, and it also comes in at under $100. So if you're looking for something like this and you don't need as much space and you wanna save a little bit of money, the Rapid Quad Zip Pack is gonna be a great option to keep in mind as well. Another bag that reminded me a lot of this one was the Cotopaxi Alpa 28, which we featured a little while back. That was a very versatile, kind of minimalistic travel backpack that opened flat like a suitcase. And the 28 liter version of that bag isn't gonna be able to hold quite as much as this one. It is offered in a 35 liter, but we haven't featured that on the channel. But the 28 liter version is a really good size for traveling on airlines with tighter restrictions. It's still gonna be able to hold a decent amount of stuff. And on top of that, it has a nice look with a variety of colors and it's really well made. And then the last option I'll mention here is the Nomadic Travel Pack, which we've talked about a bunch on the channel. That's been one of my favorite all-around bags of all time. It expands from 20 to 30 liters, making it really good for daily use or for quick trips. It has a lot of great organizational options. It's comfortable, it's well-made, highly weather resistant. And if you want a bag that can kind of do it all and you don't mind paying a little bit extra, the Nomadic Travel Pack is still gonna be one of the best alternatives that I can think of for this bag. But with all that being said, the Patagonia Black Hole Pack holds up really well against all those bags. As I mentioned throughout the video, it's really well built, it's comfortable, it has a nice amount of features, I really like the size, and on top of that, it's just really great to see all the initiatives that Patagonia has as far as sustainable materials and practices. So if you're already a fan of Patagonia's products or you're just looking for a really solid all-around bag that's gonna have enough space for traveling, I definitely recommend you guys check this one out. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you guys think of the 32 liter black hole pack or any other bags that you've used from Patagonia. If you have any good suggestions, as always, please let me know in the comments. 
And I want to thank you guys again for watching. And if you found this video helpful, please go ahead and give us a like. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And thank you guys so much.